Hello, I'm Dr. Mike Miller, and I'm the Director of Microbiology Technical Services, which is a private consulting service for diagnostic laboratories around the country. I'm also retired from the Center for Disease Control after 35 years, and I've had a lifelong interest in specimen management and clinical relevance. Now there are a lot of references that are available for you in this regard and one has been produced by the American Society for Microbiology and there are many others that are available to you. So I want to welcome you to this most informative series of demonstrations of specimen collection for diagnostic microbiology. Because of the widespread use of nucleic acid amplification for detecting gonorrhea and chlamydia, and the much less invasive urine specimen required for this test, urethral swabs may be less frequent in some facilities. However, the urethral specimen may still be required in many areas. In suspected gonorrhea, exudate may be expressed from the urethra or cervix during examination, and this exudate will contain viable cells for culture and can be collected on a swab as it is expressed. So in males, a direct specimen gram stain is very helpful to quickly assist in recognizing possible Neisseria gonorrhea. In females, the direct gram stain can be misleading because normal vaginal flora may mimic or mask the etiologic agent. So if an exudate is unavailable, the urethral swab can be used. This is a mini-tip swab used for collecting a urethral specimen. Note its size compared to a swab routinely used for sampling wounds and lesions. This swab tip will be inserted into the urethra to collect a specimen for culture or microscopic examination. Specimen collection should be performed by healthcare personnel who have completed training and demonstrated competency. Always read the manufacturer's package insert for specific instruction regarding specimen collection and transport for the type of test kit being used. Those who collect the specimen should always wear personal protective equipment, including a lab coat or scrubs, a mask, such as a surgical or N95 mask, eye protection, and gloves when collecting any specimen. Always remember to perform hand hygiene before and after the procedure. In addition to standard personal protective equipment, you will need a glass slide, since a microscopic preparation is to be made for staining in the laboratory. The swab may also be sent to the laboratory for their preparation of the slide. Explain to the patient what you are about to do. Open the swab package and remove the swab. In males, clean the glands of the penis by wiping from front to back using a soaped pad or a commercial skin cleanser. If exudate is available, express exudate from the urethra and collect it on a regular sized swab. Additional exudate can be collected to make a smear on a glass slide. In this case, roll the swab over two to three centimeters of the slide surface and label the slide correctly. If exudate is unavailable, Insert the mini-tip swab about two centimeters into the urethra. Gently rotate it to collect membrane-associated cells, then remove it. Avoid touching the swab applicator below the molded breakpoint as this could lead to contamination and incorrect results. Inoculate the specimen onto special media as soon as possible and place the specimen in a carbon dioxide atmosphere at 35 degrees centigrade. If this is not possible to inoculate the sample at the point of care, then the sample should be placed into a transport media Label the specimen with patient information, indicate time of collection, 
and the suspected diagnosis. Place the specimen in a transport bag and send to the laboratory as quickly as possible. Remove gloves and perform hand hygiene. Generally, specimens should be transported at refrigerated or room temperature and arrive at the laboratory within two hours of collection. If not tested immediately, the specimen may be held at refrigerator or room temperature for 24 to 48 hours depending on the sample type. Refer to manufacturer's package insert for specific instructions. Please note that the eSwab liquid amies fluid maintains the viability of diverse bacteria. Do not send a dry swab as this will lead to unsatisfactory results. If the tube spills its contents prior to inserting the swab, the liquid is non-toxic. Simply put the swab into another tube before sending it to the laboratory and discard the spilled tube. If the tube spills after contamination, follow procedure for blood and body fluid cleanup. Refer to your facility's infection control manual for further direction. If contaminated fluid splashes onto the person collecting the sample, treat as a blood and body fluid exposure. Refer to your facility's infection control manual for further direction.